needs a bed, he needs a home. I don't know what to do anymore, it's actually quite stressful. You know, these are children that have gone through abuse, they're going through it again, it's not right. It can be really, really stressful. Sometimes you don't sleep, sometimes you cry. Thank you. Thank you. Throughout lockdown, social workers have been trying to keep track of thousands of vulnerable children. So she hasn't seen her mum since last year. It is a world which we rarely get to see from the inside. We're quite dogged, very persistent, so if we do have concerns, we won't let that lie. For two weeks, our cameras have followed social workers at Britain's biggest child protection department. At stake, the lives of children. You know what? Find my children adopted parents because I don't feel like I can give them what they need as a mum. And that is sad because all it comes down to is my kids needing a bed. <laughs> and we see families that have fallen apart built back up again. I'm going to miss you. We're going to miss you too. But social workers fear that a storm is coming. Can the service cope? I think we will see an increase in referrals come September because children will start to tell their stories. The additional money that government's given to local authorities so far does not cover all of the additional costs and that will mean less support for families just at the point when they need it most. Ramsgate in the district of Thanet in East Kent. Thanet has the highest rates of child poverty in the whole of the county with almost a quarter of children here living below the breadline. And with households locked down for months, big issues like drink and drugs, finances, relationships festered behind closed doors. Poverty was a big driver of some of the issues around lockdown. We have a child population of around 350,000. Um, we have around 10,000 children with a social worker. So this year we might get as many as 50,000 contacts and referrals at our front door. I was really worried when lockdown started, knowing that mum was pregnant and and we have, we have provided a lot of support. But it hasn't this is the Children's Services Department of Kent County Council. It's the biggest child protection department in the country. At the moment we are operating on a skeleton staff with the majority of staff working virtually and at home. Um, and he hasn't made any clear academic progress or attainment. Behind every phone conversation is potentially a child at risk. She does have Instagram and she follows her mum, um, but she gets quite upset with some of the things mum's posting. So she's posting nights out, spending money on alcohol. And um, during the pandemic, it's become worryingly quiet. We have seen a drop in the referrals coming through our front door, which makes us concerned because they are quite a few vulnerable children now who have no professionals involved with their lives and we can't see what their lived experiences is day to day. And there's a stark warning about how busy things could be about to get. The worst case scenario is it could be as much as 250% increase on what we would normally see in September. So I'm very worried about that. I'm very worried about our resources being stretched to breaking point in September if we're not careful. And that's a concern when the safety of children is at stake. In the early hours of the 5th of April, at the height of the lockdown, 11-month-old Casey Lou Kennedy was found dead at her home in Ramsgate. There was noted bruising to both sides of her forehead. This obviously just needed to be explored. There was no previous history to raise concern um, for the baby. Because of lockdown, it took six weeks to establish the full facts around how Casey died. This is where the, the impact of Covid has, has really hit us hard actually because I think the most important thing is getting in alongside families, experiencing what it's like, you know, in, in their homes. After investigating, social services concluded that there was nothing suspicious about the baby's death. The bruising was due to a common bump to the head and baby Casey had died in her sleep after moving into a position where she couldn't breathe. You're accepting of support for you and your children. Um, you're able to recognise the impact on the children and take steps. To keep Weeks of delays has taken its toll on the family. And I just feel like I'm being blamed as I'm a single mum of five in a housing so association house in a time when actually I need support. Not being judged. And she kept me alive, <laughs> kept me alive, insane. 
got a lot of respect for the family um, just to go through this in such dire situations. A bereavement in the family tied in with the Covid crisis um, is just so unexpected. It's, it's a minefield really to get through to get the right support, to explore the emotions and it's had such a knock-on impact for the family. I think we have to desensitise just to get through the day, um, but taking a moment to stop and think about it, you do, you, it's, it can be overwhelming. We just want to do the right thing. Some cases last just a few weeks, others span many years. Heinrich Schnettler is only a year out of training, but has already dealt with a very complex case during lockdown, the removal of a child from its parent. Heinrich's meeting 31-year-old mum, Gemma. She's had five children, and each one has been taken off her. The latest, a baby boy, put up for adoption just two weeks ago. When Gemma invited individuals in her property, there were drugs and alcohol abuse, and some that did pose risks to children. Sometimes the men in Gemma's life sexually abused her and her children. Losing my children it had finally made me realise that it is time to change, and I should have changed years ago before all this happened. But there's been a development since Heinry last saw Gemma. She has a new partner, and she's pregnant. I want the baby to come home. I find it hard to trust anyone, let alone social workers, and it scares me every day that I'm going to go through all this change that I'm trying to prove that I've done and go through the whole pregnancy just to have it snatched away from me again. Can you describe to me what it's like to have child after child taken off you? <sighs> Having a child removed from your care, it's basically like your heart being ripped out and stamped on repeatedly. And to have it keep happening, it makes me feel less of a person. And it makes me feel like I'm not a mum and that I've just failed them children. And it makes me feel like I've basically given birth to them and just given them to people that need children. I don't feel like I'm a mum. I feel like I'm a surrogate person that gives birth to children and has them taken away. Is this time different? No. But ultimately, this is about a young child that we want to be happy, safe, and leading a fulfilled life. One of the most common types of referrals during the pandemic has been due to a rise in cases of domestic violence, often with small children caught in the middle. In 2015, Cheryl Green and Wayne Anderson had a baby boy called Bobby. Five months later, he died from a heart defect. The effect on the family was devastating. Started drinking, um, arguing with my partner, getting a bit physical, violent, like smashing things up. He'd come back and he'd be drunk and I'd say to him, well, you can't be drunk around the children, like around the child, you need to sort of stay away. Social workers were called to assess how all this impacted on Wayne and Cheryl's remaining son and whether he was at risk. So Today is a really positive day actually for us here. We're hoping to have a child in need meeting with a family uh, and end our involvement with them. Uh, Maria, are, are you satisfied the safety goals are achieved for the family? I'm absolutely satisfied. After months of work, Wayne and Cheryl can now say goodbye to their social workers. Where we are now is completely different to where we started. I honestly believe that we won't have any more referrals coming in for this family uh, because we found the root of the problem. I'm going to miss you. We're going to yeah. miss you too. We're really yeah. going to miss you. I've really yeah, that, enjoyed that working with you. In the beginning, it was hard. Yes. You didn't want to know no, me. No, I don't, I don't, know, I don't <laughs> want to know any social workers. <laughs> <laughs> They've made us into better people and our life so much better now than what it was a year ago Wayne is so different, it is amazing. Bye, Mummy. Go. We can't move. Yay! <laughs> Where are you?
Among the success stories, social workers say they're worried about the long-term effects of the pandemic on children. Three-year-old Charlie and his mum Sarah are sleeping on a relative's sofa because they're homeless and the pandemic is making things worse. Are you all right? It's Emily. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. yeah, good, thank you. Is he feeling a bit poorly? Sarah has a nine-year-old son that was removed from her care and is living with grandparents. She's currently got a three-year-old son living with her and she's pregnant with twins um, and they are subject to a child protection plan. Sarah was thrown out of her accommodation after an allegation she was using drugs. She's appealing, but because of Covid that's not being heard until December. Her twins are due in October. They let it get to the point that they feel they have to take people's kids and stuff away. And that's, I'll tell you, that's how I feel I'm Emily at the minute. Yeah. I feel like if I don't get home very soon, that they're going to take my unborn kids off me and everything. Okay. And that is the truth. I'm really, really We're stressed about that. that. I'm not sleeping over it because I feel like this is the only thing they've got on me is this. I just felt like ringing the social and saying, do you know what, find my children adopted parents because I don't no. feel like I can give them what they need as a mum. Yeah. And that is sad because all it comes down to is my kids needing a bed. My biggest fear is that things deteriorate um, and we're in a position where we might have to start legal proceedings. The end result of that would be that the children are removed from her care. That, that is not my aim and that, that is not the goal. My, my hope is that we can support her to secure appropriate accommodation, we can get a grip on her mental health and support her through that and ensure that she provides consistent and safe care to the children. <laughs> The number of children being taken into care stands at a 10-year high and there's a fear that the pandemic could cause a surge in demand for social services. It's not a nice feeling waking up every day and thinking, I wonder how my children are today. Naomi became separated from her three children when her mental health got too much and she couldn't cope. It was dark, it was just empty. It was an empty feeling being away from my children. Hello. Hello, it's just me. Can I come up? Georgina Lindup has been Naomi's social worker for the past 18 months with one aim, to get her reunited with her 14-year-old son, Owen. Now lockdown is easing, she can visit. Both of them, because mum and son are back together. I wouldn't want for anything better. I'm just so glad he's home. And you... Yeah, a lot of people don't necessarily think that when children go into care, yeah. that they come home. No. They think that's it forever. Well, I thought that for years. The first day that Owen came back um, for a visit, I was jumping up and down in excitement. And as soon as I opened the door and see Owen's face, I got the massive hug, big massive hug from him. And it was just absolutely lovely. I just missed that hug so much. Never knowing whether or not you're going to see your children again is it's quite scary. But to also be re reunited with your child is such a wonderful experience. It's kind of a bit of a miracle happy moment that I'm here. It feels like something's happened and it's really good, unlike a lot of the other things that have happened through my life. Just a huggy. Mm, my little man, I mm -hmm. love you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah, you. We've done it. Yeah. So did you. Yeah, we've done it. In September, all children of school age should return to their classrooms. Some will have good stories to tell, others won't. Before the pandemic, councils were warning of a three billion pound black hole in child services, as by the end of last year, thousands more children were acquiring protection. Fast forward a few months and government budgets have been torn up to cope with the pandemic. And no one really knows how that will impact the funding of these services and whether cuts in the future are inevitable. The government says it's provided support for councils to cope during COVID, as well as enabling vulnerable children to attend school. But is it enough? It looks as though we're standing kind of on the precipice of a really uh, huge problem come September. But the government needs to be more visible on this issue. They need to help us and support us to do the work that society wants done but is often hidden from view and unseen by the public. The additional money that government's given to local authorities so far does not cover all of the additional costs, and that will mean less support for families just at the point when they need it most. <laughs>